My brothers and sisters out there, how you doing this weekend? We are on the weekend. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I hope that you had a prosperous week, my brothers and sisters. And now you are sliding into the weekend. I hope that everything go well for you this weekend. We're at the beginning part of the weekend. Come on in and uh, give your brother Tony a little of your time tonight. I'm not going to keep you long, my brothers and sisters. So come on in, come on in. Don't sit in the back. Come on close to the front. We got some good content tonight. For those of you that are really thinking about being in a successful uh, relationship. So come on in, come on in, come on in. I got something for you this evening, my brothers and sisters. Come on in, come on in. We're going to give a few more people an opportunity to come on in before we get into tonight's content, which will be valuable to you if I can have your ear for a moment, my brothers and my sisters out there. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. All right, all right, all right. How you doing, my brothers and sisters out there? How you doing? Your brother Tony is in the house. If this is your first time watching this broadcast, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tony M. Toomer, and I talk about relationships. I talk about relationship, my brother and sister, basically from a biblical standpoint. When you look in the book of Genesis, as you know and, are, and you are aware, if you believe in uh, the book of the Bible and the book of Genesis, the book that Moses wrote, in the beginning, uh, God had a unique relationship with a man that man name was Adam. Secondly, God had a unique relationship with the woman. Her name was Eve. God brought them both together. That's how God started the, uh, the relationship out. He had a unique relationship with the man first. Secondly, he had a unique relationship with the woman. And thirdly, he brought the man and woman together before him. Okay. Now, I have two questions, my brothers, and I have two questions, my sister. And now you need to really listen to what I've got to say. But before I say that, those of you that don't believe in a relationship between a man and a woman, you have what is called a free will. You choose to do whatever you choose to do. But if you're going to look at this particular broadcast, I basically talk about the relationship between a man and a woman from a biblical perspective. But I do I uh, hope that you could hang out with us and listen. Maybe you can get something out of it. With that said, tonight's topic, my brothers and sisters, is God created different roles for a man and a woman that are in a relationship. Again, God created 
different roles for a man and woman that are in a relationship. My brother and sister, when it comes to a relationship between a man and woman, you need to keep this in mind. Those of you that are serious, those of you that want to commit and possibly get into a covenant relationship, you need to understand some of these things from the onset of relationship. First of all, brother, there are no perfect women out there. Sister, there are no perfect men out there. But brother, there, there is a possibility that there's a right woman for you out there. Sister, there's a possibility that there is a right man. But I want to uh, tell you, brother and sister, I don't want you to have no delusion. You will never find a perfect man, sister. Brother, you will never find a perfect woman. So let's put that out there. So don't have unrealistic expectations when it comes to a mate, my brother and sister. Every man and woman come with flaws. But you can be right for someone. That's the key thing. You can be right. And it's going to come to whether the one key thing, my brother and sister, did God put you together? That's the most important thing when it comes to relationship. Brother, did you go to seek the face of God to handpick a woman for you? Sister, did you go uh, before the face of God and ask God to guide the right man to find you? So if you really didn't go to God, it's it's a that's a little iffy thing, my brother and sister. But the best way when it comes to a relationship is to seek the face of God so God can guide you. Okay, my brother and sister, because we can't read the hearts of another gender that we can't do. So God go by the heart. So my brother, if God go by the heart, you let him select that woman based on her heart. And also, sister, you let God cause that man to find you according to that man's heart. So let God do the matchmaking. Now, I have two questions, my brother and sisters. When it comes to a relationship, first, my brother, this is what I want to put in front of you. When it comes to a relationship, my brother, you have to ask yourself this question. Is the woman that you are interested in, will this woman follow you? That's a critical thing. Will this woman follow you as you follow Christ? Secondly, sister, if you are interested in a man, you got to you got to ask yourself this question: Does this man talk to God? Have you ever heard this man talk to God? Does he ever make a reference to God? And when I say a reference to God, does he do, do it on a regular basis? So the, the two questions I'm going to run by you all again, the first question, brother, you have to ask yourself is this, is this woman willing to follow you as you follow Christ? Secondly, sister, do, is this man, does this man talk to God? Do you see this man as being a leader? Are you willing to follow this man as he follow Christ? Now, if you brothers and if you sister don't have a yes for both of these questions, you may want to revisit your relationship between that person and you and whether or not God wants you all to be together. You see, a relationship, my brother, a relationship, my sister, is made up of Jesus, the man and his wife, not Jesus, the man and a girlfriend or nothing like that or living and nothing like that. Is this man and is this woman in a relationship? And I, when I say is this man or is the woman, I'm, prefer, I'm preferably talking about you brothers and you sisters. You got to understand what type of man or woman you're about to get into a relationship with. But let me be clear and direct at this point. There are many worldly thinking men that have the mindset that men are better than women. If a man think that uh, worldly men, they think this way that they are better than women. A uh, worldly man that think that a man is better than a woman is a foolish man F because it is written in Genesis 1.27 for God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created both the male and the female, he created them them with his own image. So for a man to think that 
a worldly man, that is not spiritual man, but a worldly man would think that a woman is less than a man. But if a man is spiritual, he understands that God created the woman and the man in his own image. God created them both in his image. Now, there are some foolish thinking women out there, too. How you doing, Sister Flohar Martin? There are some foolish thinking women out there. When I say foolish thinking women, I'm talking about worldly women. Now, you have some worldly women that think that a man should chase them. Now, a man should not chase a woman. A woman that think that a man should chase her, she's a foolish woman. Those of you that are coming in tonight, tonight topic is God created different roles for a man and a woman that are in a relationship. How you doing, Sister Sh Sherry E. Smith? Now, when we go back to 1 Corinthians, when I say a man should not be chasing a woman, the reason why a man shouldn't chase a woman, and I always go to this scripture, I say 1 Corinthians 11, 9, 1 Corinthians 11, 9, 1 Corinthians 11, 9, it said, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman was created for a man. Therefore, there's proof that a man should not uh, hunt a woman down like she's an animal or anything like that. So if a woman think that a man is supposed to follow her like she's some type of animal or something like that, that's not in the cause. A godly man do, does not go around trying to chase a woman. A godly man allow for God to set up the circumstance so he could find the woman. So basically, God does all the lead work. You understand what I'm saying? Now, God, my brothers and God, my sister, created the man and woman equally. So when it comes to a relationship, my brother and sister, God created the man and woman equally. However, God, a man and a woman have different roles in a relationship, even though they are different. So the, the only difference is the role that comes in the relationship. But before God, a man and woman is equal. And God set up the structure of how a relationship is supposed to be. As you know, the structure is say that God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man and man is the head of the woman. That's how God created. Now, God created the man and woman equally as it is written in Galatians 3. 26 through 28. That's Galatians 3, chapter 3, 26 through 28. Again, Galatians chapter 3, 26, 28. And this is what it states. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized into Christ and have clothed yourself with Christ. Now check this out. There is neither Jew nor Gentile neither slave nor free. Now, here's a key thing. Nor is there male or female for all of one in Jesus Christ. So what is that saying? That in all relationships, if a man and a woman have a relationship with God, that man and woman is equal before God. The man is not greater than the woman. The woman is not greater than a man, but they're both equal. However, they have different roles in the relationship. How you doing, Sister Daniel Bond? Now, God created a man and a woman different, yet they are one flesh. The man is different. The woman is different. But when the man and woman comes together through God, they become one flesh. They are serious. They're committed. And then they move towards a covenant relationship to bring glory to to God. Now, from God's point of view, the man and woman, when it comes to a relationship, God only looks at a relationship when the man and woman is not playing with one another. The man and woman is interested in putting 100% effort into the relationship. The man is wholeheartedly following the Lord. The woman is wholeheartedly following uh, God. The man the first priority, the second priority after the man relationship with God is the woman, which is his wife. And the second priority after a woman, when she uh, have a relationship with God, is a husband. And everything else come after that. I'm telling you, my brother and sister, why most relationship does not work. The reason why most relationships does not do not work is because the man or the woman or both of them does not understand priority. If a man and woman have the understanding and the priority in the relationship, 
Now, that man and woman, they need to be equipped with wisdom. That man and woman need to be equipped with knowledge. That man and woman needs to be equipped with understanding. And that man and woman needs to be equipped with uh, discernment. Everything God create, my brothers and sisters, God, everything God create, he said that it was good. When we go back to the beginning of time, when God created everything, but this before Adam and Eve, God said, good, it is good. It is good. It is good. It is good. We understand that God made everything uh, within uh, six days. On the seventh day, he rest, okay? So everything God said is good, it's good, it's good. But when he looked at man, God said it's not good that a man should be alone, which leads to the question, why would God say all that it's not good? Now, God is perfect. God created a perfect world, but when he got to a critical point in creation, when he looked not only at Adam, when he looked into Adam, God said that it was not good. So the question is why? Now we are going to go to, as it is written in Genesis 2, 18 through 21. That's Genesis 2, 18 through 21. Genesis 2, 18 through 21. And this is what is written. It said, the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make for I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. So every animal, how you doing, Sister Nick? Every animal that God created, he brought them in front of Adam, and Adam named all the animals. And whatsoever the man called each living creature, that was his name. So the man gave name to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. Now, here go a crucial thing. It said, but the man, but Adam, no suitable helper was found. How you doing, Sister Deborah Scott? It said, for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So you got to understand that Adam, Adam was naming all the animals. And Adam noticed a difference between the animals. They looked alike, but the gender were different. They looked exactly alike, but the gender was different. When you look at an animal, my brothers and sisters, when you look like a when you look at a lion, all lions basically look alike. When you look at any animal, and you could uh, tell by that grouping of animals that they all look alike. That's the same thing when it comes to a man or a woman. When God places a, a create a man and woman, bring them together, they look alike. When I say they look alike, they look alike within because they become one flesh. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, Adam was into a deep sleep. God, he took one of the man's real. When I said God, what part of the God here we talking about? We talk about none other than Jesus himself. Jesus' name was not Jesus during that time, but this is the part of the Godhead that was doing it. Jesus was doing this. So it said, um, and while he was asleep, that being Adam, he took one of the man's ribs. Then he closed the place with the flesh. Now, here's the hallelujah part, my brothers and sisters, that made Adam's day. Out of everything, this really made Adam's day. As it is written in Genesis 2.22, this Genesis 2.22, Genesis 2.22, it said, Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. And here's another crucial part. It said, And he brought her to the man. You understand that? God brought the woman to the man. God brought the woman into the man's point of view. That's how God does it today. If you notice, Adam did not have to go running after no woman. Every woman that, this is a, this is a key thing. The men that are in the Bible that had a woman, even though they had some trials and tribulation, 
they normally stayed together until one died out. But the men that ran after women, those the men that fell on their faith. And you know the two men that ran after women. The, the, the most notable two is King Solomon and Samson. When they ran after women, they failed. You don't supposed to run after no woman. You supposed to allow God to bring the woman to you. Now, God can bring the woman to you in different ways. He might not do it like he did Adam. He's not going to pull no woman actually out of your rib like he did Adam, but God is going to set up the situation and he's going to present the woman to the man and the one, that's how the man find the woman. That is the key how a man find a woman when God bring the right woman to the man. But the man has to be following after the Lord so he can know who he is, why he's here, and where he's going. And God sees that desire in the man, and at God time, that when he bring the woman to the man. You understand? So, The Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to him. Then the man said, the man being Adam, this is what Adam said. He identified where the woman was coming from. Adam said that he said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of the man. Adam knew where Adam knew she was made for him. Just like today, God does a God does a, a per se surgery. When God brings the right man and the right woman, not the not a perfect man and a perfect woman. There there's not one perfect man and a perfect woman. Therefore, they have not one perfect relationship, but God can bring the right man, righteous man, and the right righteous woman. When I say righteous, the man have a relationship with the Lord. The woman have a relationship with the Lord. That's what I mean by righteous, because the man and woman have been dipped in the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. This is the type of couple I'm talking about. God bring these two individuals together. God does the bonding. God bonds that man and woman spiritually. God bonds that man and woman mentally. God bonds that man and woman willfully. God bonds that man and woman emotionally. God bonds that man and bonds that man and woman. Uh, I think yeah, physically. So uh, let me start from the beginning. He brought he bonded them together from a spiritual standpoint. He bonded them together mentally, willfully. Uh, then he bonded them together through his um through the uh the flesh. Somebody was trying to get my attention. I'm sorry, my brother. So let me take this down. Now, and after, and then the finance and all that kind of stuff. That's how God bonded a man and woman together. Those of you that are coming on tonight, the topic is God created different roles for a man and a woman in a relationship. Now, a man need a woman. A man needs a woman. It starts with the man. A man needs a woman. A man needs a woman for companionship. Let me tell you something about companionship. Adam was perfect, but even though Adam was perfect, God knew that Adam had a longing for something else. He had a longing for something else. That's why God created Eve for Adam. Adam needed a companion. Even though he had a good relationship with God, he had to have someone that he could relate to also besides God. So I always say that when a person say, all I need is King Jesus, I don't need nobody else, God did not create us just to need him. God created us to be social beings. So that's why he created Eve to be a companion first. Secondly, a man needs someone to help him because Eve was suitable and she was a help me. God did not create a man for Adam. He created a woman to help him, 
to help him do what? To reproduce and dominate the world. That's why God created Eve. Thirdly, the man needed a woman to complete him. A lot of people don't understand that, but a woman, God designed it that way. God took the real for the woman and represented Adam back to himself. What do I mean that? Before Eve name became Eve, and I have said this before. When God addressed Adam and Eve, it was the man and the woman. Eve did not get her name until after Adam and Eve fell, which they sinned. So when, when God talked to, when Adam and Eve, every time God talked to Adam and Eve, he said woman and man. But when he called by name, he called both of them Adam. They were both identified as Adam. Adam. I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. It's just like this now. When a man and woman gets married, the woman normally takes on the man's name. The man's family name, the woman normally takes on the man's family name. She normally drops off her maiden name. But then you have some women, they want to hold on to the main name. I can get into all of that, but I don't have time. So the woman normally takes on the man's name. So that means that that woman, she is giving up something to become something else. When, and I always say this, like if you go to the typical wedding, let's say the typical wedding. If the father is coming down the aisle with the per se bride, He relinquished everything to this man. The father then steps back. And the woman at that particular time becomes the man, the husband's responsibility. Everything that the dad was doing for the daughter, he's giving his daughter over to the man. You understand? So the man, her dad, like if the, if the daddy name is Mr. Jones, his daughter is Miss Jones. If the man she's going to get married to is Brown, the father, his name is Jones, his daughter's name is Jones. So when the man, the father gives her, his daughter away to Mr. Brown, the, the daughter giving up her father's name. She don't supposed to be Jones no more. She's supposed to totally be Miss Brown. There are some women that can still carry their family name. Now, some women do it, but to tell you the truth, sister, that's a problem. It's really a problem holding on to your family's name and your husband's name. Some women do it. Some women think it's cute for whatever reason. But in reality, a woman's supposed to totally give up her family name. You're not losing your family. You don't lose your family. You're supposed to be one with that man called your, that man is one flesh with you. Your daddy is not one flesh, sisters. You only one flesh with your husband. Only one flesh with your husband. You're not one flesh with no one else but your husband. Now, back to the topic. God created different roles for the man and the woman in the relationship. Now, what does the man supposed to do? The man supposed to be the leader and head of the relationship. The man supposed to be the leader and head of the relationship. God set it up that way for the man to be the head and the leader. Do you not know, my brothers and sisters, when Eve ate that fruit, do you think God held Eve responsible for that? No. Some people say that Eve messed up everything. That's what a lot of people would say. Let me give you some deep insight, my brother and sister. When Eve was talking to the serpent, where the question is, where was Adam? 
Let me give you some insight. Adam was not far away from Eve. As a matter of fact, Adam was there with Eve. How do I know that? Because after Satan had talked to Eve, it started talking about how Eve looked at the fruit and then she had some desires and stuff. And it said that she took the fruit and it said she ate it. And it said when she ate it, she gave it to the man that was with her. You see, that's the key word. That let you know Adam was standing right there. It said Eve ate it and then she turned around and gave it to the man that was with her. It did not say Adam came up on her or she took it to him. It did not say that. It said that she gave it to the man that was with her. So Adam was responsible for Eve. Adam was created for to be the head and leader in the relationship. God talked directly to Adam before he talked it to Eve. Now, you know why I could tell you that Adam was responsible for Eve? Because remember this, just like a wedding, remember the father brings the, the bride to the husband, right? The, to the groom, right? Picture that. The father brings the bride to the groom. God brought Eve to Adam. You see the picture now? God brought Eve to Adam. Just like how they do it in wedding. The father bring the daughter to the husband. When God brought Eve to Adam, Adam took on responsibility. Adam said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. He taking responsibility for that woman. He's claiming her in the sight of God. But when and when uh, he took responsibility for Eve, he was responsible for her totally. You understand? He was responsible for her totally. So when Adam was there, Adam was listening to the conversation between Eve and and the serpent, he was listening. He was there. I know a lot of people, that they, this, is, this is new to a lot of people that listening. Adam was there. When God came down in the cool of the day, when Adam and Eve, once they ate their fruit, that's when the Bible said their eyes was open. They knew they had done wrong. Then they heard the voice of the Lord coming. Who is the voice of the Lord? The Bible, if you all notice, the Bible always said the word of God, right? What does the word of God mean? It referred to Jesus. When it said the voice of the Lord was walking in the garden during the cool of the day. How can a voice walk? Question that. How can a voice walk? It was no other than Jesus himself. Before that, Adam and Eve, they were not afraid of him. But when they did, when they disobeyed him, they became afraid. That's why they went and hid and they tried to sew some feet, some leaves together to cover their neckness up. So when the Lord came, he came and he said, he said, Adam. He called his, he called the name, he said, Adam. Who was God talking to? He was talking to both of them. Because remember, Eve didn't have a name at that time. He was talking to both of them. But Adam knew he was supposed to be the leader. Adam was the spokesman. Adam told the Lord, I'm afraid. We were we are afraid. And then the Lord, you see, the Lord's, it didn't really surprise the Lord. Let me put that out there. It did not surprise the Lord. Adam gave up his responsibility as a leader because he could have told Eve before she ate that, don't do it. He could have even told Eve, stop talking to him. He could have stopped the conversation. Adam could have stopped the conversation. He could have got grabbed Eve by her hand and said, come on. He could have even said something to that serpent. He could have said, leave my woman alone. 
He could have actually talked to the serpent because Eve was talking to her. Adam could have talked to her. Adam could have said, leave my woman alone. So Adam was giving up his leadership. He would not, the second thing to uh, provide, he would not provide any covering for, which leads to he did not protect Eve. Which lead to he did not love Eve like he was supposed to. Because if he would have loved Eve, he would have stepped in in front of between her and uh, the serpent. He would have got right in there. A man that loves his woman, he's going to step in. Any intruder, the man would step in. He allowed this entity, Satan, to use a snake to talk to his woman. A man, even an imperfect man, he would step in if another man trying to talk to his woman. You understand? If a man see another man trying to talk to a woman, he will say something to that man because it's a sign of disrespect. Now, the man role is supposed to be, he's supposed to be a leader. That's his role. He's supposed to be a leader. He's supposed to provide. It's on the man to provide. What does the man supposed to do? He's supposed to provide a lifestyle for the woman while he's representing the Lord. So he's supposed to lead the woman add to the Lord. He's supposed to be leading everything. He's supposed to provide protection. I mean, he's supposed to provide food, shelter, and all the necessity of life. The man's supposed to do this. He's supposed to protect the woman from any harm. Anything he's supposed to protect her. What do I mean by protection? You see, the natural thing, men are more suspicious than women. Women are more trusting than men. Listen to what I'm saying carefully. Women are more trusting than men. Men are more suspicious. Remember what I was talking about last night about a man nor a man and a woman nor a woman. Men are suspicious because men, men know the nature of men. Women are trusting. Why do I say that? Look at the example of Eve. She listened to this serpent. She would, she would trust in him. That's what Eve would do. Eve would purpose, but she would trust in the voice of Satan. She would trust him. She was trusting, but she was a perfect woman. Sisters, this is not knocking you down or anything, but sisters, you are susceptible to, to be deceived more than a man. A man could be deceived. Don't get me wrong. A man could be deceived. But so, but because the Bible clearly states that the woman was deceived, not the man. Let me tell you where that's at. I want to bring that up for you. Hold on. I'm going to tell you. Listen to me carefully. This is what it said. First Timothy 2 14. First Timothy 2 14. First Timothy 2 14. And this is what God word said. It said, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. That means the error. You understand? Again. First Timothy 2, 14, it said, and Adam was not deceived. Adam was listening to everything the serpent was saying. Everything the serpent was saying, Adam didn't, Adam wasn't fooled by what he was saying. Adam knew what he was doing. The question was, why did Adam allow the serpent to keep talking to his woman? That's the key. But the woman was deceived. Sister, you are more susceptible to be deceived by men. 
because you have a trusting nature. Let me give you an example, sisters. You and your husband, y'all can have children together. Let me give you a give me, give, Let me give you a situation. You and your husband can have children together. You are emotional, sister. You're more emotional than your husband. You would trust your children's words quicker than your husband. Your husband more than likely could see that you, Lil Johnny is lying. Lil Johnny could be looking serious. Lil Johnny could be crying. But your husband had the compassion to say, Lil Johnny is lying. I'm going to give you a situation, sister. I'm going to give you a situation. If your child go to school, your child go to school, and the teacher tell you, Cheryl yeah, said I don't trust people either, and the teacher tell you something about your child, let me tell you, sister, your child, your child that came out of you, more than likely, you're going to believe your child more than what that teacher say. I'm going to give you a situation. When I used to work for the city some years ago, I used to be a part coordinator at a rec center some years ago. I used to be a coordinator. So children used to come to the gym and I used to have, I used to run the summer program and all that kind of stuff, right? So children they know how to act in front of their mama and they know how to act when they're not around their mama. Some of those little children, they did some questionable thing. They did some little devious stuff while their mama wasn't around. The mama come to the gym and she say, and I said, Miss Smith, your son or daughter was doing this. Miss Smith, most of would say, I know my child didn't do that. I didn't raise my child like that. No, I did. I know my child didn't do it. Let me tell you something. Some of the children that came to the gym when they was little, as they got older, I had warned some of the mamas about some of the children, especially some of the boys, right? Some of these guys, they they got they had to deal with the law. What do I mean? The police. They got locked up in everything. But the mama didn't believe the children were doing stuff like that. You see, the mama, she was so close to the child, she couldn't see it. I'm going to give you a situation with me. One of my sons, when he was small, they called, he got into an issue up at the school, right? Him and the little boy, they were fighting, okay? One of my sons. So, I lower my son. I got son, but I'm talking about this one particular. I lower my son. So, I took my son back to the school. Now, keep in mind, I lower my son. I listened to what the principal said. And I listened to what my son said. I love my son. But I did not go by my emotions. I went by facts. I was not going to side with the principal because he was the principal. Because principal can lie too. I was not going to side with my son because he was my son. My blood. I had to weigh the facts. I had to put the facts on the scale. I had to listen to what this principal said, and I had to listen to what my son said, and the math had to be one plus one equal two. If my son was trying to get me to believe that one plus one equal three, I was going to show on him. If the principal was trying to get me to believe that one plus one equal two, uh, one plus one equal three, I was going to have to uh, show on him. So what am I saying? God put men in a leadership role. B 
because now you saw now women a lot of times women will say that men are cold. It's not that we are cold. We are more factual. But there's nothing wrong with emotion, don't get me wrong. Because emotions are good. Like I'm gonna tell you this. Last weekend I went to a basketball game. A little boy fell, a little boy fell on the basketball court. The little boy mama and daddy was there. This is how men and women operate. The boy fell on the court, bumped his head, started crying. He went out of the game, sitting on the bench. This is what his daddy said. His daddy said, he gonna, he gonna be, he'll be all right. He gonna be bumping his head some more. The daddy didn't flint. The game kept going. You know what his mama did? His mama got up from the bench, went round, went, went, went round the court, went to the bench where her son was at, and put her son on her lap. That's emotions. That was her. That was her baby. Her dad. The dad said he'll be okay. His dad didn't flinch. That's the difference between men and women. Men and women, we think different and we operate different. Is there anything wrong with it? No, it's nothing wrong with it. We got different mentality. The thing comes when we try to mix roles together. Men are the leaders. Women are the followers. When it comes to provide, the man's supposed to be doing the providing. The woman's supposed to come along to subsidize, to help. But it's the primary responsibility for the man to provide. It's the primary responsibility for the man to protect. The man's supposed to protect his home, not his house. His home. His home is his wife and his children. A man have to, which equates to the, being a leader, being a provider, and protect means he love. He decides to love them. The man have to be mindful, I'm the leader of my home. I have to provide for my home. I have to protect my home. By me doing this, I'm, I'm deciding that I love my wife and my children. Whether they piss me off or not, I can't go by my feeling. Because if I go by my feeling, I will want to do something else. I have to rationalize if I'm a man, I love my wife. But if she do this, I got to separate what she did, what pissed me off from her. If my child did something wrong, I have to separate my child from the deed. That's how the Lord does. You see, if the Lord really got up my brother and sister, if the Lord looked at us and said, you just did it. The Lord separate our sins from us. You understand? The Lord, it comes from us, but the, God, the Lord separate us from our sin. That's how we get saved. A man is supposed to be thinking that way when he's dealing with his family. If his wife, if his wife fall on her face or piss him off, he's gonna have to separate that. When I said you gotta be able to separate, this is what leads, I'm gonna tell you another thing. I got to touch on this. Some of you brothers, that's why you wanna jump, that's why you wanna jump and hit on your wife with your fist. That's why y'all wanna say things to tame them up. You wanna break them with your mouth and you wanna get your fist and hit them sometimes. That's abuse. You don't suppose that you, you have to be in control when you talk to your wife. You are a leader. You have to, you got to not put your hands on her. Don't kill her with your words. Don't kill her with your hands. If you have to use words to break your woman down, you do not love her. Any man that's a leader that taught that called it went or his woman names, and I and I'm I'm gonna say if any man that called his his wife a whore, 
any woman that call his wife a bitch, he don't love her. Any name like that without her name, you don't, he don't love you, sister. Any man that call you out name and talk down to you, it just all the way he does not love you. It ain't no ifs and buts about it. He doesn't love you. If the man put his hands on you, he doesn't love you. He doesn't love you. Some of you sisters, you believe that he love you. When he call you names and when he put his hand on you. And then some women, you get so accustomed to that. And you hold on to that. That's foolish. Some of you sisters, I question your sanity. Some of you sisters, y'all like to get your butt whooped, don't you? You like for men to tear you up with their words and get your butt whooped. You like to come to, you like to go out with shades on, on you, your eyes up, your lips split and all that kind of stuff. And you, some of you sisters, you try to justify why the man did it. You get gaslighted and you tell people what, you try to make it be like you did something. That's not so. That's not so. If the po if you call the police and this some weird stuff, some women they call the police because the hummer jumped on her. When the police come there and try to put handcuffs on the man, then she flip and then she jump on the police saying, "Let him go." Call the police and then you want to jump on the police. If a man doesn't lead you, sister, if a man doesn't provide for you, if a man doesn't protect you, he does not love you. If he miss and one of these three points, leadership, provide, protect, he does not love you at all. You cannot straddle the fence, brothers. Now, what the woman's supposed to do, what her role is, this is the woman's role. A woman's supposed to follow the man. What does that mean? She's supposed to obey and submit to the man. Sister, if you marry the man, you put yourself in a position to obey and submit to him. No, he's not your daddy. But the Bible clearly say that God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man and man is the head of the woman. When Adam and Eve messed up, God said your desires would go to your husband. He also said that he will rule over you. So sister, before you marry a man, whatever your desires is, your desires go to that man before your own personal desires. If you got your personal desire, you want to do something, don't get married. Especially if the man fallen God. Your desire, it takes second place to that man that fallen God. You're supposed to be obey and submit. B by obey and submit, brother, let me add this, brother. In order for your woman to submit to you, you need to be submitting to Christ. Now, sister, when you follow the man, you have to be obedient and you're supposed to be submissive. I didn't say be crazy and uh, be a slave, be a maid. I'm not talking about that. A woman that follow a man, what does it mean? It means that you walk directly beside the man. You don't walk in front of him. You do not walk behind him. You walk by him because you're a queen. Queens don't walk behind the king. Queens don't walk in front of the king. Queens walk by the, by the king. Queens sit by the king. The queen get to dance at the ball. Everybody know the queen. That's who you are. Secondly, the role of a woman, you supposed to support and encourage your husband. Out of everybody else, 
Your man looking for your stamp of approval after God. A man could be known, a man could be popular in front of the world. He could do, he could do great things for this world. But let me tell you something, my sisters. The approve, the support and encouragement from a woman, his wife, it, it exceeds that of anybody else. If a woman is not supported and encouraged her husband and other women support and encourage her husband, that's a problem. Why would other women support and encourage your husband than you? You're supposed to be the number one cheerleader sister for your husband. Thirdly, Sister, your role, you're supposed to multiply. Whatever your husband give you, you're supposed to multiply it. For example, children. If a man wants children, he can't have no children without you. You the multiplier. If a man give you money to go to the grocery store, what he give you, you're supposed to be a good shopper. You supposed to know how to shop. To, to, to tell you the truth, I'll give you an example. If I have a hundred dollars, and I consider myself got a little, a little sense, I got a hundred dollars. Cinderella have a hundred dollars. Cinderella and I go to the store. I'm thinking I'm a smart shopper, right? I'm bottom line, bottom line. I'm thinking. I'm, Cinderella and I, we could have a hundred dollars. She could come out that store with more with that hundred dollars than I can. But I'm going in there being logical and all that kind of stuff. But she can maximize one hundred dollars more than me. Women multiply. If a man got a work, especially that man working for God, sister, how you move multiplies what that man is doing. You follow him, you support and you encourage him and you multiply. You multiply by when you talk. Whatever that man is doing for God, whatever you're doing, his, it, it multiplies. Like when I come and talk to you brothers and sisters, most of, most of the time when I talk to you, I talk to my wife about some of the topics that I talk to you all about. So I don't want you think, and I talk to other people too, but I mostly talk to my wife about some of the topics that I'm going to talk about. And I run it by her sometime. I run it by her and she'll say, okay, I, 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 could, I can go with that. Mm, I, I don't feel that you should, should say that. And then I say, why? Because, see, I suppose I'm listening to her. Now, I have to listen to her, but I have to listen to her to see is it from what God or what from her. You understand? So I have to listen. So when I present some of my content, my brother and sister, or whatever I do, what you don't see, my wife, she, she comes along and she tell me some things. Even if I do consultation, she'll tell me something. Even though you see me more, you see me more out there than you see her. She be in the background a lot of time doing stuff. She said, you have it. But she helped me to multiply what I'm doing. The last thing, it comes to respect. Sister, if you follow the man, if you support, encourage him, if you multiply to a man, that's respect. You respecting him by following him. You respecting him by supporting and encouraging him. You, <coughs> excuse me. You you are respect him by multiplying. You sister are an asset to the man. You are an asset to the man. You could be an asset or a liability. Speaking, and we're talking accounting. Brother, when you find a woman, 
You got to understand, is this woman from God or is this woman from Satan? That's what you're going to have to decide, brother. You, you, she can't, she can't be both ways. Even though she's imperfect, you, brother, two of the most important decisions you're going to make in your life, brothers, is your whether or not you're going to follow Jesus, and secondly, who you're going to get married to. Those are the two most important decisions you're going to make. It don't have nothing to do with things or other people. Do are you going to follow God or you not? And the woman that you find to be your wife. So Satan know what you like, brothers. Because Satan know we look, we we like to look. We like to look at women. He know what type of women you like to look at, brothers. He know that you like to look at women that got, you know, that heavy up there and that heavy down there and stuff. He knows it. God knows that. You need a woman that's heavy on the inside that goes out. Satan going to bring you something that a bad mama jamma. To tell you the truth, brother, let me tell you, let me give you some stuff. Brother, it's better to get a woman that's beautiful on the inside than on the outside. I know you like a woman that look glamorous and stuff, but it's better, brother, to get a woman that's beautiful on the inside than on the outside. Now, if God grace give this woman beauty on the outside, hey, that's it. Hey, he just threw in some meal. If you happen to have an attractive wife, God just threw some meal. But brothers don't get hooked on women how they look all the time. Cause that, hey, that's gonna go south eventually. Cause they're gonna age. They're gonna hit the wall like you, brother. So you you get a woman that's beautiful on the inside. Sisters, when a man come up to you, Satan bring men up to you too. Don't go for it. He look, he got that sick figure. He got all that money in the bank and all that kind of stuff. Don't go buy all that stuff because you will get with a man that that shining like gold, but you're going to be empty on the inside. It's better to have a man that's wealthy on the inside. What do I mean? Because he got a relationship with God and God owns it all. So you need to get with a man that's wealthy on the inside that's shining on the outside. It's very important, brothers. It's very important, sister, that you know the difference between the role of a man and a woman. Once you have your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, discernment, and you know your role in the relationship, you're going to have some storms in the relationship. But once you know your roles, you can have a successful relationship, my brother. So stop listening to the people that give you worldly advice. A lot of you buy books. You look at programs on TV. You look at celebrity couples and all that kind of stuff. You listen to these uh, DVDs uh, and all that kind of stuff. And you listen to all this crap. And how do you people say how you supposed to get a man, how you supposed to get a woman? But if you notice this, they don't say nothing about God in the equation. For a relationship to be successful, my brother and sister, a man and a woman must have the Lord in the relationship. That's the key to a relationship. That's the glue. Do you or do you not have the Lord in your relationship? If you don't have the Lord in your relationship, you just going through the motion. There are a lot of you sisters, you are with a man or you talking to a man. He He's not a leader. He's not a leader. He's not a leader. He got all that other stuff, but he's not a leader. He may appear to be an alpha male. He's not no leader. You never hear this man talk about God. You never hear this man, this, you never hear this man praying. This man never take your hand and pray for you and the family. This man never, he, he just don't say nothing about God. You talk more about God than he do. You go to work, you go to public worship serving more than he do. He stay at home. He say he tired. He go to wash his car. 
He want to stay home and cut the grass. He won't even get a Lord one hour publicly with you. He say he tired. And he, and he complain about your preacher. He's not a leader. Just because a man could pay your bills and make life appear to be good for you, that doesn't mean he's a leader. Even though he quote unquote treats you nice, that's not a leader. A lot of nice men are going to bust hell wide open because they don't have no relationship with God. God, the Bible said our righteousness is like filthy rags. What we think is good, God don't think that. The only thing God will put a stamp of approval on is when it's done in the name of his son, Jesus. Sister, if you have a husband that is a, a, that's into philanthropy, philanthropy, something like that, I'm trying to pronounce it, but I'm screwing it up. A man that, if you got a man, sister, that give money to the poor and stuff like that. If you got a man that do that open the door for an old lady, that get up and let an old lady sit in his seat. If he's not doing it in the name of the Lord, it's nothing. It's just like fifth of rags. God said our righteousness is like fifth of rags. It look good in front of you. It look good in front of the world. If your husband get man of the year award, he get man of the year. And what they're going to say, they're going to tell you about all his accolades from a world standpoint. But do they say your husband is a man of wisdom? Or do they just talk about what he does for the company? Or what he done for the world? He gave, he gave, he gave this organization money. He went and did. Have you ever noticed, my brother and sister, when you look at TV sometimes, when you look at some athletes and stuff, you ever notice this? They'll go to where the athletes at, right? And they have the cameras on the athletes showing them talking to children and everything, right? And the athletes talking to the camera and stuff. It shouldn't be that way. The athletes should do things away from the camera. Now, if the camera catch the athlete, it's supposed to, it should catch the athlete when he doesn't know the camera's coming. You see, if an athlete doing things for, for children or something like that or anybody, it's supposed to be done in secret. If you have a person doing something in front of the cameras and everything, it's for them. Never believe it for God. It's never for God if they shining in front of the camera. Unless somebody wants to recognize him. He ain't got nothing to do with it. He didn't, he didn't do it to get recognition. Now, nothing wrong with a man getting recognition. Don't get me wrong. It's nothing wrong. If they go to him, not him to flash in front of them, that's the difference. He's not flashing. He's doing it in secret. And God's going to bless him openly. You see, if a man does it in front of people, that's his, that's his glory right then. But when he does it in secret in God's name, God is going to bless him openly. The same thing too, sister. Don't do nothing to get attention. If you're a good woman, God going to break, God going to uh, bless you openly. The same principle, sister. Know your role in the relationship, brother. Know your role. Brother, sister, let your light shine. That's where a light will always shine. If your light shine, my brother, sister, people going to, those people that living an alternative life, they're going to move away from you. You ain't even got to say nothing about Jesus. Just how you talk and how you move, you're going to disturb people. How you move, you're going to disturb people. You don't have to say a lot about Jesus. Just how you move and how you talk, your light going to shine. My brother and sister, let your light shine so God can get the credit through his son, Jesus Christ. And with that said, my brother and sister, I love you, brothers. I love you, sisters. Have a good evening. Peace out.